we left it off where the posts were in the reverse order that we want them to be. Like we want to see the most recent posted one at the very top and then the least or the, the oldest one like pages down. And we're going to do this by updating our query set. So let's go ahead and update our query set. And then what we'll do is add pagination, which means that we can actually add pages to how the posts actually come through like most blogs actually have. So if we go into our view for this list, um, we're going to jump into posts, views, and the post list. It's going off of this query set right here. All we have to do is add order by, and we can do negative timestamp, and that's going to reverse the order. So if we refresh in here, now it reverses the order. Now we can see it exactly as we would want to. Um, so you can also update this order in the model itself. So if we add class meta, which the meta class has to do with anything that's not a field. So it kind of describes the model a little bit more. We can add ordering in here as well as a list. And I could say negative timestamp and as well as negative updated. So if for some reason they were created at the same time, the one that was most recently updated was will be the one that shows. Um, so that doesn't actually change anything with our ordering in our view because of what we added. So if I get rid of that order by call and refresh in here, notice the timestamp is now showing through. Um, another way to make sure that it's in order, if you don't have a timestamp, all you could do is just do the reverse primary key or reverse ID. And with adding that negative in front of it gives it that reverse um, quality. Uh, but again, the timestamp, um, or if you had a published date, that would be something that you'd probably want to have on there as well. Um, so that's it for that. And now what we want to do is jump into the Django documentation for pagination. So the topics slash pagination, or just Googling Django pa uh, pagination, that's what you'll find this. And we're going to be copying this paginator in a view. I'm going to go ahead and copy everything that they have, and I'm going to bring it into our view uh, first. So just come right underneath it. This is what I do as a developer all the time. If I see code that I want to use, I bring it into where I use my code and then I pick and choose what I need to make it work correctly. Um, so now the first thing that we see is we have a query set here, which is context list, which is the same thing as ours in a, in a way, but it's just slightly different. I'm just going to go ahead and cut everything below that. So from here up, cut that and put it right underneath our query set and just change the paginator to go off of the query set, right? Notice it doesn't have anything else there that we don't already have, right? So everything else here is something we can just get rid of. And now all the paginator stuff, we just want to move that to the very top of the imports. So very top, right under messages, and there we go. So we have the imports done. So that's, that's it really what we would need to do for our paginator, except for one thing. What you might notice is it says context here. What it really should say is query set, right? So we want to change all that to query set. Um, but what we see here is contacts are just a little bit different than query set, right? So I'm going to call this query set list and then use query set list instead. And then our context is going to stay as query set, right? So it's just subtle differences uh, in between the code. So the, que the original query set is what starts. Um, and then we have our actual query set which is going to be using the paginator and the page. So I'll explain each aspect of that in just a second, but we do want to add in the pagination now. So I'm going to go ahead and copy just the bottom part of this, right? So this first part is just looping through that query set. The second part is the actual pagination. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And we're going to come into our template for post lists underneath the for loop and still inside of this div right here. We're going to paste this pagination in. Again, we called it query set. So everything that says context should be, um, excuse me, we are calling it object list actually. So um, the reason I know that is because this is called object list, not query set. So inside of the list itself, everywhere we see context should say object list. There we go. So now let's go ahead and take a look. Let's run the server again. Uh, we got an indentation error. So back into our views. So the copying and pasting sometimes works fine, sometimes doesn't. So in this case, as you see, I tab some stuff in here and here's the spacing. So when this happens, you just have to tab it back out um, and then just tab everything back in. 
as needed. So that, that solves that indentation level. That, that's what happens sometimes with copying and pasting as you'll see doing it enough on your own. So if I refresh in here, what I see is there's a lot of posts and it says page 101. It's really hard to tell if it even worked other than the fact that it says page 101. So let's change this to being 10. It's gonna show the recent 10 and we refresh in here now. Now if I scroll down, it now gives me these multiple pages and it's gonna come through here and show me all of the different pages that are related to this particular um, actual list of items, uh, which is cool. So it's actually going older. Um, and that's all we really need to, to do for pagination. Now what's happening here is we have page coming off of our own variable. So we could also say this as, um, let's just call it ABC for now. So it's gonna get ABC. Now if I refresh in here and change this to ABC now instead of page, it's going to actually adjust based off of that. And if we did change it to ABC, we would also need to change it inside of our post list, uh, which is down here. So we'd have to change these into ABC as well. Um, so if I refresh in here and I change that, uh, then it has to change up here. So that is where I would want to make this even a little bit more dynamic. So I'm gonna call this the um, page request var so page request variable is really what i'm calling that and i'm going to set that inside of our view so up here we'll say page request variable is equal to abc and now it's going to be getting that and then we'll put this into our context page request variable is that and that and there we go so a abc one two and so on so now I can just dynamically inside of my request, change it on how I need um, to be in page or ABC or whatever I'd like to call it. Um, so that's it for pagination as well as our ordering with the query set. Now, if you have any questions on this, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.